At this point, I think it's safe to say that the new iPad Pro is the most capable looking, incapable computer that exists in the entire world. And I say that as somebody who's been really patient with the iPad Pro for a really long time. But to understand the new iPad Pro, I really think you need to understand the promise of what this product was always supposed to be. So to do that, I went back and I watched the original iPad Pro unveil from September of 2015, almost nine years ago. And I want you to listen to exactly how Tim Cook prefaced the announcement of this all new kind of high-end iPad. iPad is the clearest expression of our vision of the future of personal computing. A simple multi-touch piece of glass that instantly transforms into virtually anything that you want it to be. See, Apple from the beginning has been pitching the iPad Pro as the computer of the future. You don't need a MacBook, you might not even need your phone. You just need to take this with you and you can work, play, and do anything you want with it. It's your oyster. And when you just look at this new iPad Pro, you might actually believe that. It is unreal how thin and light this product is. And to me, it feels more akin to a stack of paper than just a super light tablet. The new OLED display on here is quite literally the best display I have ever seen on any product ever. It is that good with incredible black levels, unreal color accuracy, and crazy levels of brightness. The M4 chip inside somehow feels faster than before. It's noticeable and just opening up apps and using the iPad like a normal device. Even the accessories got better. The Magic Keyboard is the best one yet with a function row, and the Apple Pencil for artists seems like a massive leap forward. Yet when you add up all these advancements, they don't actually matter at all. They're completely irrelevant. The thin design, the crazy accessories, the cool new screen, it's all great, but it doesn't actually change the way that I use the iPad. Guess what? That's not true because the hardware is holding this product back. No, I would argue that since the original came out in 2015, Apple has had everything they have needed to make this real. A massive, large display, a desktop class chip that's way faster than most PCs, the key accessories, including a keyboard as well as an Apple Pencil. That has all been there since the very first day we ever got an idea about what an iPad Pro was supposed to be. Nothing has has changed in the fundamentals there. And nothing has also changed in the fundamentals of the iPad Pro software either. And more on that in just a second. Now, I've wanted to make my new iPad Pro even more versatile. And that's why I partnered up with Anchor, who sponsored today's video, to show you their brand new 551 USB-C dock that's an eight-in-one tablet stand for your iPad. Because by just connecting one cable, you're adding another USB-C power delivery port, a 4K HDMI, two USB-A data ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a micro micro SD and full size SD card slot. I'm also somebody that uses my iPad Pro in a lot of different contexts. Sometimes I'm sketching on it with the Apple Pencil Pro where I wanna lay it really flat and close to the table. Other times I'm in my kitchen and while I'm cooking, I want my YouTube video at the absolute perfect angle and you can get that with the 551 Hub. For me, I'm always on the go, I'm moving things around. So being able to just fold up this stand and have it be super compact and portable is incredibly helpful and it's allowed myself to just maximize my creativity in new ways that I don't get with Apple stock hardware. Or if you're looking for something even more portable, Anchor has the 541 6-in-1 USB-C hub, which is crazy tiny for everything that this adds. On the back, there's a 4K at 60 hertz HDMI port, a USB-C port, a USB 3.0 port, as well as an SD and micro SD card slot and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This 6-in-1 USB-C hub is also a great option if you want to use it with your Magic Keyboard because it fits perfectly alongside that and it really looks like something that Apple should have made as an accessory in the first place. And right now you can grab either one of these when you use my links down below in the description. A huge thank you again to Anchor for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's get back to it. Now Apple calls the software on the iPad iPad OS, but I think that's a pretty generous name. But the glaring issues with this are obvious if you spend more than five seconds trying to use this iPad like you use a MacBook. It's trying to move windows around and the resizing being weird and locked into strange positions. It's not having any kind of easy access to your files and being able to move them like you can on the Mac. It's the desktop class apps, but more so than anything else, nothing feels as tight, as reliable, or as precise on my iPad Pro as the exact same tasks on my MacBook. And I will say this year, it does seem like a lot of people are saying this louder than ever before. The software on the iPad Pro is fundamentally flawed. And then they've also gone on to suggest 
broadly two different solutions for this that are kind of insane. The first one is that we should just straight up throw Mac OS on the iPad, which sounds good until you actually realize that the Mac already exists. What is the point to throw the exact software that already exists on a great platform onto the iPad? It doesn't actually fix anything. Plus Mac OS isn't optimized for touch. This would likely cannibalize and eat into some of the Mac sales, which Apple doesn't want. And yeah, it just seems lazy. Like. Apple could have done this five years ago if that was something that they were ever going to do or that was actually realistic. And then there's the second one, which I've been saying for a long time because I thought this was the answer too, that we should just keep putting Mac-like features on here. Apple should keep innovating with laptop level features on here year after year, ever so slowly, and eventually this will be as good as a laptop. But sorry to break it to you, that hasn't been working because that is the exact thing that Apple has been doing for the past decade on the iPad. At first, we got things like split view and slide over where you could run multiple apps at once. Then they changed the name to iPad OS and added more desktop stuff. Even more recently, they released the native magic keyboard that made this more like a laptop than ever. And they even added a stage manager window management system in 2022. That's been a disaster. All of this has not panned out. So you have to question at some point, is it the features that Apple's adding? Is it everything getting too convoluted? Or is there something wrong with the base of what Apple is building upon? I was thinking about this idea nonstop for almost an entire year. I know I'm insane, but I finally figured it out. And I figured it out when I was making this video for the new iPad Pro. Because like any good researcher, I went back to the original iPad announcement back in April of 2010. Because I really wanted to see when Apple announced this, what were the core things that existed on day one that are still there today? And right at almost the very beginning of the presentation, when you see the iPad for the first time, it's there in front of you, Steve Jobs holds it up and it's running iOS. It's running the same software that Apple built on the iPhone. They just scaled it up to be on a larger tablet size display, which was a brilliant decision. It was a time when people didn't really know how to use touchscreens yet. iPhones were still a very new thing being only three years old. They had major success there. So they ported it over to an even larger iPhone. It was brilliant 14 years ago when the iPad was literally just a tablet and nothing else. Today, it's way more than that. It's a drawing computer with the Apple Pencil. It's a writing computer with the official Magic Keyboard accessory. And to me, it looks a lot different than that original iPad. It's a completely different form factor than it used to be, but it's running the same software as when it was just an iPad and nothing else. And when I started to think about this, it explained so much because other platforms like the iPhone are fundamentally the same form factor as before. The Mac as a laptop or a desktop is the same form factor. It runs the same design software. But with the iPad trying to do so much and be so much, it just doesn't feel like they've ever thought about it that way. They still think about it as that big iPhone from 2010. At this point, I just have to believe this is a cultural choice for Apple for whatever reason. And it's always been done this way or Steve liked the iPad this way. It was supposed to run iOS or maybe another reason entirely because I don't see an explanation for why the software has never evolved, but the other parts absolutely have. It's why I'm so sad to sit here and tell you that I don't use this new iPad Pro any different. I've been watching videos because it usually has the best display. I've been doing some light work, like checking my emails. And I've also been browsing the web because I think it's really fun to hold the internet in this giant tablet size. And yet, it's still not enough because what's underneath just still stinks. And until Apple changes that, I genuinely do not believe that a single other thing that they can add to the iPad other than a complete rethink is going to fix the problem. It might make things a little bit better. I'm not here to tell you that Apple has done nothing over time at all. They have made slight improvements, but I do feel like even the most recent advancements such as stage managers just feel wonky and weird and not native and off. They just feel off. That's my theory. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. And I will leave you with this. I still use my iPad Pro every day, genuinely. And I mainly do one thing with it. I watch videos and the new OLED display makes that even better on top of it being crazy fast, on top of the accessories feeling better. But I don't enjoy using this as a computer and I will take my MacBook 10 times to zero if it's like, hey, you have a job that you're getting paid for, you need to get work done. Hope you are doing well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it maybe made you think about the iPad a bit differently. I've been Sam. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.
That's why you don't do this as an intro. Maybe that's a sign. <laughs>